Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is my 1997 Bianchi Mega Set in steel. Not to be confused with the Bianchi Mega Set concept of titanium. The difference basically between the Mega Set steel and the Mega Set titanium, other than the obvious the difference in materials, is that the Mega Set titanium used a really huge down tube. I mean, the, the the down tube on the Mega Set Titanium almost looks disproportionate with the rest of the frame. The Mega Set Steel, even though it's clearly a larger down tube, I believe that the down tube complements the rest of the frame pretty good. And to me, it also shows how forward thinking Bianchi was in terms of shaping their steel frames in the 1990s because this concept, Bianchi continued using the large down tube throughout the 1990s and early 2000s, not only in their steel and aluminum models, but they also used this concept in some of their early carbon frames. Now, Bianchi has another mega, it's what they call the Mega Pro or the Mega Tube. And the distinction between the Mega Set and the Mega Pro or Mega Tube is that as the down tube starts to connect with the bottom bracket junction on the Mega Pro, the down tube begins to flare out horizontally as it connects with the bottom bracket shell. And that's one of the things that Bianchi did back then to help stiffen up the bottom bracket area. The Mega Set uses a more traditional solution for a stiff bottom bracket, and that's by employing massive chain stays. Well, massive chain stays for this era of frame. This particular model is constructed out of the Dacia Zero, which was their top of the line steel tubing at the time. Important to me, I'd actually been ha after one of these for quite some time because my last traditional steel build was made, up the, was made out of the Dacia Zero tray, which is kind of like a mid-level steel tubing. It wasn't horrible, but I wanted something definitely top shelf. The difference in terms of uh, material and quality, uh, I can't tell the distinction in terms of ride characteristics, but the last build that I had made out of the Dacia Zero tray, the frame weighed in 1800 grams. This frame made out of the Dacia Zero for a similar size frame weighs in right around 1600 grams. So it's about a 200 gram difference. So to me, it would lend for a very interesting build. So how did I get this frame? The frame was purchased from an Italian vendor on eBay. The frame was in fair to rough shape when I got it with some visible surface oxidation, some dings, some paint chips, some of the decals were missing. There was some fading and discoloration of the frame. And I knew going in that I was gonna have to get the frame uh, repainted. The frame also appears to be a former protein frame. If I had to guess, I'm gonna guess that it was from the Mercaton Uno Pro Team Squad, the frame uh, had the name of a rider, his name was Nanini, emblazoned on it. I don't know who he is. If you are familiar with him, you can leave a comment in the notes below and we'll let him know that I've got his frame. So my idea after I got the frame, frame and fork, was to kind of like do a mock build, see how it felt, and then from there, that would give me ideas of how I wanted to proceed with the frame. Uh, I never built the bike with quill stem. Uh, I apologize to you purists, but I spent many years riding bikes with quill stem and it's just not, and it's not that they don't work, it's just, it's not my preference in terms of responsiveness for a bike in the way that I like to ride. So after I put the bike together, these were kind of like my impressions of the, the bike and its ride characteristics. To me, the steel fork gave the bike a little bit of a, uh, too much of a jarring ride. To me, it was unnecessarily harsh and I wanted something that would still give me responsiveness but not beat me up on the ride. I did, however, really like the tightness of the rear triangle, the massive chain stays in terms of the responsiveness that it gave to the bike in terms of change of speed, acceleration, and even some aspects of cornering, you could feel that the rear end behaved very well. So my build, my idea of my build was to keep some of the traditional feel of the steel frame, some of the solid feel of the steel frame, but also incorporate some of the aspects of modern road bikes that I like for the type of riding that I like doing, but at the same time have a little bit of a nod to the 1990s with a little twist of nostalgia. So my build list involved, number one, sourcing a one inch carbon fork number two, 
building a bike with a mix of Campagnolo components. I wanted, like I said, I wanted to have the down tube shifters in 10 speed and the rest I wanted to have campy modern drivetrain. Let's first tackle the issue of the 10 speed down tube shifters. Those of you who want to know, you know that Campy stopped making down tube shifters in the, with the eight speed in terms of index shifters, but they continue to make them for aero handlebars. And if you find a set of Campy uh, aero handlebars that, has, that says it has down tube shifters, all you've got to do is take the shifters out of the pot, remove the little rubber bladders, and you'll have jewel looking like 10 speed down tube shifters that shift impeccably with a Campy rear derailleur. In terms of the rest of the drivetrain, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to take advantage of some of the stiffening concepts of the modern drivetrain. So this is a Centaur 10 speed ultra torque crank set that I wanted to go with that concept to help stiffen up the bottom bracket area. And this is actually a Campagnolo Record 11 rear derailleur. All I did was delabel both items so that there is no issue with graphics and mix matching and things like that. And I actually think it came out Pretty nice. The brake levers are traditional 10 speed brake levers, brake levers only, no shifters. Felt really blessed to be able to find those off of eBay. And then the rest of the cockpit, I wanted to have kind of like a, for me, what I consider to be like a, a modern cockpit type of deal where I would use titanium or polished aluminum wherever I could. My last build, again, the Campione, I use carbon everywhere on that bike because the objective with that build was to get that bike down to 16 pounds. And I was able to achieve that by going even with uh, Zip 202 tubular wheel set to be able to help bring the weight of that bike down. All right, so the build, beginning with the frame set. What I needed for the frame set to complement it and get it do, riding the way how I wanted it to ride was a carbon fork. So I was able to source a one inch carbon fork from a Bianchi EV2. And I was able to match that up with the rest of the frame using a Dacia 0100 stem and handlebar in polished aluminum, which kind of like looks a little bit like titanium, but you know that it's not. One neat thing about the 0100 handlebar, I was able to find one in the rapid hand movement bend. I thought that Dedachi I only made that polished aluminum either in the ergo drop bend or what they call the shallow classic. But again, I was blessed to find it in a configuration that I like to use on my rides. The seat post was a titanium seat post, a beautiful titanium seat post that I was able to source again from eBay, a vendor in China. It's actually a beautiful seat post. The uh, videos and pictures don't do it justice. It's rounded towards the insertion point and starts to uh, narrow into kind of like an arrow shape as it gets closer to the junction where the seat cluster is really a beautiful piece. The saddle is Cell Italia SLR Boost with the titanium rails. And at some point, I'm gonna get that recovered to match the Brooks handlebar tape that I currently have on the bike. Now, ride characteristic. How does this thing ride? It rides beautifully. Again, just like the Pinella, this is the kind of bike that you love riding this thing solo or on the front of a pace line. It just, it just goes. The only issue with this bike is acceleration. If you're comparing the acceleration to a modern day carbon build or a modern aluminum build, it just does not accelerate the same. You feel labored when you're accelerating the frame, but once it gets up to speed, it's a beauty to ride. It almost has like that big Mercedes, that big body Mercedes or that Cadillac feel to it when it's rolling along. So I'm not gonna call it a rocket ship because it's not, but neither is it a slug. The carbon fork lends a really nice compromise to the bike where it doesn't feel as rigid. The bike feels a lot more compliant to me in the way how I ride with a carbon fork. Also, we took a lot of weight out of the build by doing that without even trying. And again, it lends the feedback that you want from the bike, but it's not beating you up. It's a great bike to ride all day.
if you know bikes and you get on this and you start pedaling it, you're going to immediately get a grin on your face just by the feel that it gives you. And that's why my admonishment is to cyclists who are new to the sport or you've been around for a long time, you haven't ridden a steel frame or it's been a while since you've ridden one, man, be daring. Don't let your next bike, don't let your next N plus one be the 2023 carbon frame. Go ahead and adventure a little bit and see what you could do with yourself, with your imagination, with your knowledge, with some help from the cycling community to build yourself an incredible steel frame build. As always guys, thanks for watching. As you know, our aim here is to inform, instruct, inspire, be blessed.